Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, how long can a global city survive an onslaught of parochial politics? The city I'm talking about is Bangalore, India's IT hub that is home to 5,500 IT companies and 750 MNCs, that is multinational companies. It's a city that hosts 400 of the top 500 Fortune companies. It's a city that attracts the best talent from across this country. A city that generates 17% of all jobs in India. This is Bangalore. Why would a state then that generates IT exports worth $100 billion on the back of this city want to shoot its own golden goose? I say this in the context of a new Tughlaki Farman that has been issued by the Congress government in Karnataka. The Congress government in Karnataka wants all multinational companies based out of the state to put a display board on the premises that declares how many Kannadigas actually work in the company. So essentially every MNC has to count the number of Kannadigas that work in the company and then that number has to be put on notices bo notice boards on their premises. The government says those who do not comply will have their licenses cancelled. It doesn't end there. The Karnataka Assembly has also been told that IT companies may be next. That is not all. The Karnataka government has also announced an app they say it's on the way and it will help lodge complaints from any Kannadiga who has been dishonored. What is this, a blasphemy law? Ladies and gentlemen, parochial politics is an age-old election gimmick. But do you really want to unleash it on a city that pays 60% taxes of all taxes in Karnataka? And just by the way, these taxes are not paid only by Kannadigas. They are paid by every professional from across India who works there. Now, to my mind, it is a dangerous road to go down. But is there any other view, a counter view? We will find out. Before that, some reactions. To ask you, this is a debate that's been on for years together now. The government has taken a step towards this. How are you viewing this? How is the country reacting to this? It is a very wrong thing the government is doing. The government is trying to create fear and prey into the hands of unruly elements who indulge in violence. Last four months, you had a set of people going around the city, abusing traders, pulling down signboards. Government, the police did nothing to stop. Very, it, it appears that whether there are some political sanction for that. So they created fear. We are all living in fear in Bangalore that is unruly elements can do anything and the government will keep quiet. That's the fear. On top of the fear, you want such a rule like this just to demonstrate that you're standing up for local Kannadigas is very wrong. This is uh, wrong and it will no, hurt the interests of Kannadigas. My guest this evening, Bhaskar Rao, is spokesperson of the BJP, advocate Umer uh, Junaidi is a political analyst. Nilesh Tribhuvan is a senior lawyer and Anurag Naidu is an entrepreneur. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for being here on the show. Mr. Bhaskar Rao, <clears throat> how's the BJP reacting? And I ask you, and I ask you this in the context of the fact uh, that earlier this year, or was it some time ago, that I'd heard Mr. Bumai promise 80% jobs for Kannadigas in the private sector. So be careful about what you say. See. Though there is a question of Kannada pride, Kannada asmita, etc. But definitely this is not the mm. way to force mm. people who are entrepreneurs over there. Karnataka is attracting investment because of a variety of reasons, historical reasons. But uh, punishing mm. some people mm. in the name of language is not correct. Good number of Kannadigas are also working. Kannadigas are doing very well. And uh, to give due mm. to what Shivraj Tangadgi has mentioned, Probably he's over enthusiastic in ensuring that jobs come to Kanadigas over there. But uh, threatening this way mm -hmm. is definitely not the way. BJP doesn't uh, subscribe to this kind of ways mm -hmm. over there. BJP is a national party and we welcome mm -hmm. all kinds of people here. But definitely, Kanada Asmita should be given its place, mm -hmm. but not at the cost of mm -hmm. threatening people and driving investment out. 
and not playing into the hands of unruly element. There has to be uh -huh. a careful balance. There has to be a careful balance. That's what I can say. Okay, you're saying there has you're saying there has to be a careful balance. Uh, Umair Junaidi, would pride. you want to come in here? So no, you, so the, the, that's the whole point, right? The BJP is neither here nor there. No. Essentially, my and own Kanada, sense is you, uh, you don't know which side of the divide you're no, on, Kanada. given the fact that no, this pro-Canada rhetoric is something that the BJP is also a master at. Canada Asmita should be respected. But this is not the way to threaten IT companies that you put a board. <laughs> Putting a board and writing with a chalk piece is all outdated uh, things over there. IT companies and MNCs don't uh -huh. do like that. And uh, this is only going to be counterproductive. No. And how will you define who is a Canadica? Bangalore is a melting uh -huh. pot of so many the uh, places, so many people who have come here, so many North Indians can speak such fluent Kannada over there. How do you define them? There are Tamilians who can mm -hmm. speak excellent Kannada over there. So mm -hmm. do you have a certificate of proving that who is a Kannadika mm -hmm. or a non-Kannadika over there? Or do you have some kind of... So it is okay. only going to okay. open a Pandora's box over there. No, Kannada pride should be respected, uh -huh. but nobody should be threatened. Investment okay. is going to fly out if such kind of attitude... Okay, is okay. So, so I hope you... Mr. Rao, thank you very much for that very nuanced and balanced uh, uh, outlook and argument. So I hope that the BJP will protest on the floor of the House and vote against this move. I hope that is what the BJP will do. I have already mentioned to you, Kannada Asmita is prime. But we don't want to play into the hands of some goons or politically sponsored activi activities over there. Okay, so you are saying that you will still vote for it, though you know that there are inherent inherent uh, dangers built into it. Anurag Naidu, as an entrepreneur, how do you view uh, the Karnataka government's latest uh, latest brainwave? I'm calling it a Tughlaqi Farman, but go ahead. Well, thank you for having me on the show, uh, Shreya. You know, I think you know I understand the the political compulsion here because. You know, the government of the day wants to localize issues, wants to take that uh, Kanadiga pride, Kanadiga Smita and all that. You know, the signboards, display, these are all one thing. But, you know, I really don't understand hurting the sentiment, the investor sentiment. Is it in the favor of Kanadiga? Is it in the favor of the state or not? I, I honestly don't feel so because I'll tell you one of the very interesting stories. And uh, this is something that I've been questioning a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Tesla was... Was, was had had already set up their office in Bangalore some time back. And one or two years later, they decided to move out of their office. Today, and Tesla did do an analysis and they wanted to, they were interested in setting up a factory in Karnataka. They moved to Gujarat, you know, for God knows, whatever is the reason. The whole idea is the state government was not successful enough in convincing a company like Tesla to set up a pl plant in Bangalore, which, is, which offers world-class ecosystem. I think there's no other place than Bangalore conducive enough to mm. for the growth of an, of an MNC, particularly the word MNC is important here. Now, Bangalore has been a very global city here and everyone knows about it. And also, I don't understand the reason being already majority of the employees in most of the companies, if not majority of, of a dominating chunk of the employees, are Kanadikas, are the locals of uh, Bangalore and Karnataka for the logistical reasons, because the companies are here, it is easy to find and easy to retain employees from the local area. So, I, Correct. I seriously feel there is no Correct. problem right now. Just by putting a notion or putting a brand or labeling it, you're not doing anything, but you are damaging the investor sentiment. And Bangalore being a global city, the startup capital of India, the startup capital of And you know, you can't South tell India, global companies... Anurag Naidu, you can't tell global companies, you're welcome here, please set up your plant here. And then tell them, don't choose the best that is available to you. Choose 80% Kanadigas. Why will any company, IT or otherwise, want to come and set up shop in your state? So essentially, you're saying goodbye to big companies who want to probably come into Karnataka and make their way to a place like Haryana. Sure, sure. But advocate a... Umer Junedi, uh, 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 minute. Mm -hmm. I just want to get Umer Junedi here because my heart right now is bleeding for uh, brand Bangalore as it were. Uh, Umer Junedi, have you tried to wrap your head around why uh, the Karnataka government wants to slaughter its golden goose and make their own pol political biryani out of it? Uh, uh, Shreya, I would like to request you to please calm down and uh, 
uh listen carefully and uh, see the matter what it is uh when we say bangalore is a global city and when we say uh, bangalore is a place for all the uh, it persons it companies and all uh, what's wrong in uh, karnataka government's move if they say the usage of uh, 60% of language in sign boards should be compulsory what if they say the the number of uh, kannadiga should be displayed what if they say uh, the uh, the number of uh, kannadiga should be more in the company uh, 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 overall the locals the localite should be given the preference what's wrong in it uh, you know the the place of bangalore the resources Adeko, of bangalore what is wrong in that uh, the, uh, the, when the, you do the and say things Karnataka. like that uh, junedi sir when you say things like that look what happens it's on your screens you Hello. empower goons you empower goons to take law into their hands and threaten uh, everyone see, in the vicinity see, they are not kannadiga that what is happens, what happens what, and, what and happens can we can you deny the fact point? that bangalore are to so politics has to reflect what happens on the ground only na nilesh tribhuvan can i ask you whether what the I'm move say, is even sustainable uh, what i mean any multinational yeah, company give me a minute here definitely it is sustainable okay. why won't a company give the jobs to Achha the people why won't a company use a language that will be more easy to communicate with the people where they are working so what's wrong in it and if, if that if is the case and if they want to do it great but you can't tell companies that 80% people who you employ have to be kannadigas no you can't impose these tuglaki farmans on them for logistical Arre, reasons if, if probably companies in any case are employing kannadigas only if, because in karnataka more kannadigas will be available than people from up or bihar or maharashtra but to tell a company or tell mnc is do if, it if there are, tell us how many otherwise your licenses talented. will be cut what is this if there are the talented and, and do these other people uh, from bihar and up and maharashtra come from pakistan and china they are part of your country only na anyhow nilesh tribhuvan can i just quickly ask you uh, advocate umer junaidi saying it is legally feasible i want to ask you mr tribhuvan if the move is even i mean if if anyone if any right minded citizen or mnc although mnc is never want to take any pangas with the government but if they want to go and challenge it in court will it stand the test of law this tuglaki farman that has been issued to understand this issue we'll have to just go into the roots of the uh, matter first this is not for the first time which is happening in india andhra pradesh has also declared 70% uh, reservation for the locals madhya pradesh has done that odisha has done that rajasthan has done that tamil nadu has done that in past and in most of the cases uh, they could not pass the te uh, test of the court also the most of the in most of the cases the court has declared the high court has declared that it is unconstitutional only in some of them in the gujarat there is a 10% quota for the locals but that has been upheld by uh, the uh, gujarat high court uh, the court has mixed views uh, for it but the majority of the views are uh, you cannot have such kind of a laws in place wherein you will restrict and you will uh, you will make it compulsory for the mncs or any other companies to have a uh, you know particular quota rather than that the quota has taken a view rather than you making it compulsory why don't you just incentivize it given incentives for the moment you gives an incentive with the company you voluntarily opt for it then th those rules are justified rather than just forcing it upon them because it's a completely uh, you know validity of the fundamental rights which has been guaranteed by the constitution even the supreme court has taken this views in multiple cases mm -hmm. earlier and just let me just since we oh. are already you guys oh. are already having a debate over it so let me just give you the numbers the it mm -hmm. companies at the moment are being exempted mm -hmm. and the uh, contribution to the gdp from the karnataka uh, it's 66% is from the service industry the only the percentage what we are talking about the compulsion mm -hmm. is for the 16% of the people would be for the factory and the manufacturing units mm -hmm. one percent is uh, you know only mm -hmm. the construction okay. and the agriculture 15% is agriculture i'm sorry 66 per, out okay. of 66% it is not been compulsion mm -hmm. or compulsion on them at all mm -hmm. okay okay mr tribhuvan i think your numbers are illustrative as well I i'm afraid i'm wrapped i'm completely out of time so i'll have to wrap this debate but gentlemen thank yeah. you very much for joining us uh, it's a subject i think that divides many of us uh, especially many many of my friends who live in uh, bangalore we leave it there for the moment thank you very much